So in a previous video, I talked a little bit about how Rosen Seal can actually be overwhelmed. Now, my box is definitely not a debuff box. I mean, I have two or three debuff characters in here, and I do like the debuffs when they happen, uh, but they are very rarely a core part of my strategy unless I first pick Rain or something. And generally speaking, that's not really something I would do. And I think it's precisely for that reason that I think this video will be a pretty good demonstration that even when you're not really trying to strip off all of Rosen Seal's shields, it's actually very much possible to have it happen, especially if the player using Rosen Seal just isn't careful enough on how her talent exactly works. So first, I really gotta say I appreciate Mr. Take It Easy's box here. Uh, sure, it has a lot of meta characters, but it also has uh, Albedo, it has Emilia, it has Clotaire. Always fun to play against a variety of boxes. And he actually second picks Emilia here. Uh, third pick Bozel, not a bad choice even when going into Liana. These days when you're fighting debuff characters versus cleansing characters, it's really just dice rolls all over the place. So because of that, I still have to go through the trouble of banning major debuff characters like Licorice and Gizroff. Uh, but that of course still leaves him with Clotaire, who is sort of a debuff character. He's someone who appreciates debuffs being around to enable him to do certain things. And he's just an insane AoE damage character as well. He does actually ban my ring despite having a Rosen Seal first pick. So it's not like Mr. Ticket Easy is unaware that Rosen Seal can be overwhelmed, but that doesn't mean he's losing with two healers that are pretty good at removing debuffs. Wheeler, of course, is pretty good at removing debuffs with a combination of Mass Heal and Dispel on his side. And Almeida is definitely not some kind of amazing debuff healer, but she can use Force Brace and she has Mass Heal and her 3 cost skill, which are both AoE heals, so she can kind of work in a pinch. So as a standard, uh, the first turn or two is just going to be us setting up, so let's just wait and see what happens. So here, my opponent is the one to initiate with the uh, Bozo Black Hole. As usual, the Black Hole makes a mess of everything, but I at least didn't clock it, which would just be the worst thing ever. One thing I do feel the need to point out is that you'll notice that Bozo is three spaces away from Rosen Seal when he's casting his Black Hole. Now, this Rosen Seal is not six stars yet, so she does not apply a shield when Bozo is three spaces away. So right now, Bozo only has two crystal shields on him still. Uh, also, right here, it's clear Mr. Take It Easy knows how Lightning works because he sleeps him. Rather than sleeping Landius, who has already moved, he clearly just doesn't want me to be disrupting his formation using Leiden. And luckily for me, he doesn't clock sleep or anything. If he chains clock sleep, uh, there's really nothing I can do about that. You also notice that Bozo is actually still outside Rosen Seal's continuous application of her shields. And now I've put up Almeida's 3 cost skill, which allows all of my units to put some minor debuffs around. Here I act again because I know I have no choice. If I do not act again Almeida, that means he's just going to be able to get two AoEs off uh, in a row on me because he has turn initiative, and I'm forced to move late and last because he slept. I highly doubt that I would have been able to take two AoEs from him and survive. And check out Clotaire's 3 cost skill here. Disables my revives, does a lot of damage, does more fixed damage after that. Just, just really crazy AoE. So even despite Almeida healing everybody up, she does take a fixed damage take herself after she ends her turn, which potentially puts her in kill range. Just comes down to a stat check. You'll also notice that thanks to Almeida's 3 cost skill, I managed to strip the two shields that Bozel had. Here he does his Earthquake and he finally gets a clock for himself. And Earthquake of course is Bozo's most painful spell unless you're running a bunch of flyers. So that's actually pretty bad news for me. I luckily get a Gale on my Sky Archer, which means I'll have the spell up for two turns in a row, which definitely softens the pain of those uh, Bozo debuffs a hell of a lot. And look at that Amelia attacking into my Landius, nearly one-shotting him. Amelia definitely can hit pretty hard with her Justice skill plus the Treants. But at least now I'm finally in the position where I can safely pull in Amelia. And with Amelia unable to guard anybody, uh, I can finally take out one of his DPS to at least alleviate the pressure on me a little bit. Uh, definitely gives me some time to heal up, because as you can see, uh, you know, my tanks are in pretty bad shape right now. Uh, Rosen tries to kill Leiden here, but thankfully he has bishops on her instead of something more dangerous like sorceresses. So again, thanks to Almeida's 3 cost skill, I was able to strip the shields off of Bozels, and that's why I'm able to actually route Bozel right here. In the grand scheme of things, it's probably not that big a deal that I stunned him, but it just gives me some breathing room. Uh, he of course heals up a little bit. He also had the option of maybe taking one of my Landius lives or something, but I'm guessing he figured it wasn't really worth it. Good chance that Bozo would have died if he didn't heal up here. He's also starting to grab the center tiles, so Fog Wars is about to begin. And here comes my Matthew and shows off how bad he is at killing things. And keep in mind, this is with uh, Broken Sorix. This isn't even like Crystal Warlocks or something. So it looks like we're just going to be slapping each other for a while, trying to gain control of the middle. I'm 
So finally my Matthew decides that he doesn't want to disappoint me anymore and actually gets a kill for once. So with no real DPS's left for him, uh, he, I guess he decides to run away. He was actually very far ahead in damage however, so it is somewhat possible he might have been able to stall me out in the middle, uh, but it is somewhat possible I would have been able to get Leiden's 3 cost heal back up at some point, and then try to lock Emilia down again and then kill his healers. Uh, but it definitely would have been cutting it close on the turn count. 